If you're ready to hit the road for long term or for just the weekend, there are some essentials you absolutely must have before that you set up at a campground for the first time. Now, we have gone gung-ho on some accessories over the years, but in this video, we're gonna talk about the bare bones minimum of what you need to get set up for the first time. Let's jump right in. So the first thing that you absolutely want to make sure that you have, if your RV does not have one built in, is a surge protector. Now we're using this surge protector from Progressive Industries. And really the reason that you need that is because you want to protect your RV from any potential surges, or sometimes these can actually be wired incorrectly. I cannot tell you over the last five years of RVing, how many times that we've actually come to a campsite, open this up and the actual electrical receptacle is burnt or there's other issues. We've actually unfortunately heard of some fires that have started that way. The other thing is is that your appliances inside of your RV need a specific amount of voltage to be able to run properly and if that voltage is low it can actually cause damage to some of those appliances in the RV so having a surge protector really make sure that your RV is protected your appliances are protected everything is protected against any sort of electrical malfunctions in addition to that electrical surge protector, something that you absolutely probably want to highly, highly consider getting into your equipment arsenal right away are one of these dog bone adapters. Now we carry this with us because our RV takes 50 amp service. And there are some times that we go to say a state park or other type of campground where only 30 amp is available. And that's where we are going to use this particular adapter to be able to essentially kind of step down our power so that we can still use the power at that pedestal. Now, the other thing that we have is this little adapter. And what this does is this makes it possible if we are in what's called a mooch docking situation. So if you are in a situation where you want to be able to just plug into a household outlet on the outside of a house, you're staying at a friend or a relative's house, or maybe you just have the RV brought home for the weekend so that you can do some work or clean it out, that's where this comes in handy. So in our scenario, we're able to just plug plug the 30 amp adapter into this 110 adapter, and then we're able to plug our electrical cord into this and run off of standard household power. So this definitely something that you probably wanna add to your arsenal sooner versus later. So the next thing that you absolutely are going to need is a fresh water hose. You want to be able to have a way to get water from the campground water source to your RV. So you need some sort of freshwater drinking hose. Now it's super important that if you have things like a black tank flush, you don't use the same hose that you're using for your drinking water to use for your black tank flush. So we carry separate hoses, one specifically for drinking water. In other instances, we'll actually hook up a second hose to be able to hose off kids or dogs or whatever else before that they come in the RV. All right, so the next thing that you're going to want is a water pressure regulator. Now, the reason that you want this is because you don't know how much water pressure could be coming out at the spigot of a campground. Now, the water lines inside of an RV are not like your traditional sticks and bricks houses. They're actually like rubber PEX tubing and they can only withstand so much pressure. And so especially when you have campgrounds that are maybe like on some type of a well system, you know, like the spigots where you have to lift up the handle, those can put out a lot of pressure and there's a potential it could blow out and flood the lines in your RV. You do not want to come home to a swimming pool inside of your RV. So a water pressure regulator, make sure that that pressure stays dialed back to about 45 PSI and keeps those pipes on the inside of your RV protected. So the next thing <laughs> that you really do want from day one, just trust us on this, is a different solution when it comes to sleeping. Now, early on, we discovered that the mattresses supplied with RVs straight from the manufacturer are definitely not comfortable or conducive to a good night's sleep. 
And that is why we upgraded the mattress in our RV to a mattress from our friends at RVmattress.com, which is the sponsor of this video. Now we chose the Aurora Lux Hybrid mattress and this switch has significantly improved our sleep and rest quality. Plus we also use RVmattress.com to get new mattresses for our kids' day beds that we recently built. And they're sleeping like babies on these things. We went with the Dream Foam Essential mattresses for the kids' beds and they absolutely love them. RV mattress carries a wide variety of mattress sizes and dimensions to fit almost any RV bedding needs and their mattresses are delivered compact, rolled, and boxed which makes it very easy to get in an RV, especially with the convenience of getting them through those narrow RV doors. The shipping from their Arizona factory is both free and fast. And the other thing we love about RV Mattress is that their parent company, Brooklyn Bedding, provides a wide array of bedding options for homes and RVs alike. They offer a 10 year warranty on their mattresses and a 120 night sleep trial. You could save 20% off by using our link in the description below or visit rvmattress.com forward slash grateful and a huge thanks to RV Mattress for sponsoring this video and their continued support of this channel. The next thing that you absolutely want to make sure that you have for that first camping trip out and really something you're going to use long term is a water filter. Now, water quality from campground to campground, state to state, it's all over the place. And so you really want to make sure that the water that is coming into your RV is filtered. And so we've actually used a couple of different types of water filtration systems over the years. And we've come back to the Camco Taste Pure water filter for a couple of reasons. But really the biggest one is, is some of the other filters that we tried using actually really restricted the water flow. And then even though, yeah, our, our water might have been like ultra filtered somehow, it didn't really give us hardly any water coming out of the sink. It was like a little drip. So we've come back to this one. This is the one that we really feel like gives us the best filtration but also doesn't restrict that water flow. And then a couple of things about this particular Camco water filter, this has a six step filtration technology that offers reduction of those unpleasant tastes, odor, lead, chlorine. I mean, I can't tell you how many times when you turn on the spigot at a campground, like the water just has an odor to it. So this gets rid of all of those types of things. Sediment, heavy metals, and it also includes kinetic degradation fluxion or KDF. You can do some more research on that. But really what that does is it's going to prohibit the growth of any mold or bacteria, which is obviously something super important that you want to make sure that you don't have any of that going on inside of your RV. It has some of the top industry certifications and you just know that you're getting great tasting drinking water. So the next thing that you absolutely are going to need when you get out there is you need a quality sewer hose. Now we have used a ton of sewer hoses over the years. We've actually had a few poopsies as well when we've had sewer hoses break on us. And because of that, we have done a ton of research and we have finally landed on this particular type of sewer hose from Wastemaster. Now with this one, it's a super heavy duty. It also uses a cam lock technology. So basically it's a different technology to secure the pieces together than your typical bayonet fittings. And then also where it goes into the ground, it has a secondary valve. So when you go to dump those tanks, you're not like in this frenzy. And let me tell you, this can happen. There's a lot of pressure when you go to pull these waste tank valves is the water comes out into the hose and then goes to where it's dumping in the ground. It can actually like come out of the ground if you don't have weights or things like that. This particular hose eliminates the need for all of that, which is why that we have switched over to this. But you're gonna need something to be able to dump the waste out of your RV. Even if you're in a boondocking situation, you're gonna need to stop by a dump station at some point. So you absolutely are going to need to get a sewer hose. Here is another must know, and this is something that actually has been very controversial <laughs> amongst the RV community, but that is keeping your black or gray tank open or closed when you're at a campground. So here's the deal. We have partnered with our friends over at Unique Camping and Marine for several years now, and they have done a ton of research on this particular subject. So you want to keep your black tank closed at all times, unless you are actively dumping. Now your gray tank, it's actually better if you do leave this open 
so that your gray water can go directly into the sewer system and you don't have any buildup of any sorts of smells or anything like that inside of your gray tank. I'll actually put a link below for some more research on that if you would like to actually look at some of the science behind why that is now the recommendation. So now one thing before that we're going to leave, like say on a travel day, we will close the gray tank for just a couple of hours while we're finishing up any laundry, finishing up any showers or dishes to allow a little bit of water in the gray tank to help flush out once we're dumping the black tank, but in general, we leave our gray tank open when we're at a campsite with full hookups. All right, so now the next thing that you really do need from day one is leveling blocks and or wheel chocks depending upon your specific type of application. So if you have a towable RV, like a fifth wheel or a travel trailer, you need to have some wheel chocks that you put on those wheels once that you're parked for stability and make sure that that doesn't accidentally roll forward or backwards on you. And then the other thing is some leveling blocks. We have some old school just pieces of wood that we've used. We've also have a few of the plastic types of leveling blocks that you can get, but you definitely want to make sure that your RV is level so that you are comfortable on the inside and you don't feel like you're rolling off the bed at night. So you'll have to let us know what are some of your like day one essentials that you use for RVing. You'll have to let us know in the comments below. Also let us know any questions that you might have. This is where the RV community, we can all come together and help each other out by just having a discussion in the comments below. Now that we've talked about essentials, you're gonna wanna watch this right up here on some more cool mods and upgrades that you probably wanna consider.